Welcome everybody to Tai Chi to the People. I'm Coach Jan. We have Sam here from the Philippines. We got Vintage today from New York, now in LA. So Vintage is actually a really, really talented push hands player, Tai Chi uh, player as well. So today we're going to work on really basic Wu style Tai Chi for the four move uh, set that is really the foundation of all my push hands experience, all my grappling experience, etc. So we're not only going to do the pattern that you can do uh, for hours on end with with only a few people. My father and I would do it almost every day. Uh, and that's what helped us become, uh, get to the level that, that we got to uh, on the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team and internationally. But also we're going to throw in three moves, three moves that you can play with and add into this four move set to break the pattern and then return back to it. Those three moves are going to be an, a st an arm bar, the, a basic arm roll arm bar for push hands. Uh, it's going to be the a, a, a sucking movement, drawing the opponent in and then releasing them, launching them out. Uh, and some people say Lou, and then boom, and you throw them right back out with bird's tail. And then the next one is going to be an arm drag. And I'm drag, you guys have seen me do that so many different times. So, uh, but we're going to get to it right now. So first we'll just start up with our uplifting heaven. We're going to move a little faster today. And uh, let me adjust this camera so you can see the full body since everything we're doing is full body. So imaginary string lifts you from the top to the top of the head, feet shoulder width apart and parallel, relaxation cascading down the spine. Again, I'm working through some uh, and a few injuries, so I'm really focusing on the natural curves of the spine rather than the drop in. So I'm not doing the drop right now, I'm allowing the curve to go all the way through natural curves. So imaginary string lifts you up, inhaling, breathless the wrist, Exhale, wash the color of the palms and fingertips. All the breathing in and out of the nose, the tongue and the ceiling of the mouth. Inhale up. Interlace the fingers, exhale down. Inhaling up, stretching out of the hips onto the toes, exhale down. Two, inhaling up. Inhale even deeper. Exhale down. Inhaling up, stretch out of the hips onto the toes. And we'll widen the stance right now. Half horse stance, hollow fist, weight on the heels. Imaginary mm -hmm. string lifts you up. Exhale, pelvis rotates on the femur. Inhale up. Notice that my hands are glued to my hips. Eyes on the belly button, exhaling down. Inhale up, eyes on the belly button, exhaling down. Inhale up, exhale. And reverse it. Inhale up, exhaling down. Breath pulls you up. Exhale, drop your head. One more. Inhale up. Exhale, drop down. Drop the hands. Inhale, breathless the wrist. Exhale, the palms and fingertips. Inhale, and exhale. All right, back. So now, you're going to get to the push hands. Of course, Wu style means, well, one of the things it means is to, that the feet are going to be parallel, shoulder width apart, and parallel. So my toe. My back leg that I'm sitting on is going to be pointing forward the same way my front toes are pointing forward. Obviously, my center line is going to shift from a leg to leg, but I'm actually going forward and to the side when I go back and forth. I'm not holding straight back like this, straight back. You can do these awkward movements. Uh, the, more, the more strength and understanding you have uh, within your own posture, you can start to do very awkward things. But for now, we're going to do the basics. So, toes back, notice that my weight, I'm sitting on the back leg enough, my toes are up on the front leg, my toes are up, so only the heel touches, and I'm seated, imagine that string lifts me up, and I'm getting that ankle curve all the way through, the, down to the spine, and weight on the heels. And when I go forward, keep my hands behind my back just so you can see here, when I go forward, I'm in my A frame. And even with my A-frame, I'm keeping the natural curve of the spine, so I'm not tucking in my lower back to remove the curve. I'm allowing this natural imaginary string to go uh, straight through to the heel. My nose is over the knee, knee over the big toe, and notice that I'm coiled on the front leg. Mark's joining us. Let's press Mark in. So notice that I'm coiled on the front leg, meaning that my shoulder, my hip, my shoulders reflective of my hip. My body is a box. I collapse into the crease in the groin to allow the weight to drop down the inside of the leg into the heel. 
and then ball clip big toe when I need to expand out of that to push forward. So here I am, square hips, square shoulders, and then I bend that square at the corner, hip falling to the crease. That's your A-frame. That's your A-frame right here. Very, very strong. Looks like you're overcommitting. You are definitely not as long as you keep that back heel down. Very helpful against counter, against wrestling. Great for counter wrestling. So now we're going to do the the um, the pushing. We do some push-ins. <laughs> so I'll start out in this sponsor. Vince is going to come over here. And we're going to go, here we are, the four push. The four push, and you can do this with your, on your own as well, since we have some folks on their own. We'll do this on our own first. So let's, let's stand facing forward. Push one, forward. And then two, wind up, push and brush. You notice this is a drilling hand, it's the brushing hand. Inhale back one and two, and then push, 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 push. Notice that when I push now, I'm actually slightly on an angle. I wind up, two, roll back one, roll back two. Exhaling, pushing up on an angle, drill on the second push, and then you aim right for the elbow with this hand. This is what you're actually doing when you add a partner. Aim for the elbow, roll back one, and then roll back two, boom, elbow right here. And for the elbow, roll back two. Double push. And then drill push and brush the belly. And for the elbow one. And for the elbow two. And when we add partners, still do the same thing. And pushing one. Then he's going to drill in the chest and brush the belly two. And for the elbow one, redirect. Aim for the elbow two. Pushing and drill. Aim for the elbow, roll back, aim for the elbow, roll back. Let's get a little closer so you guys can see the detail of what's happening inside with the other hand that's not just aiming for the elbows. So one is aiming for the elbows, the other hand is creating that, that little shield. And I'm also having like my little Omitopo Shaolin kind of prayer hand here that's helping to create a little barrier to keep the pressure inside on the angle I want the pressure on. So he's pushing, and if I just had it here, he's gonna pin my arm. So I turn my waist and move the elbow with the waist, and now I've slid. You can just stand on this angle real quick. Thank you. And so you'll see from this angle, I'm sliding the pressure off. And then he's gonna drill my chest here, and with that slide, He's brushing me here. This is to remind your opponent to sit. So if you feel too much pressure here, or if you feel that the hip is locked, you sit and let that slide off of you. Now you actually have to slide the top hand because this top hand is drilling into my heart. The concept is to drill and to push hard. And this hand is on the elbow right here on the outside elbow. So slide off. It looks just like this, except it's adapted for reality and slide it off. And notice I still have connection on his arm and I push out. So, and now I drill him. He moves me off, look at the hand position, elbow one, and see, hand guiding, one, and now two, pushing, guiding. And we're just going back and forth. We've gone over this before in other videos as well. So with Zoe and with some of my, the other cast of characters you've seen here on, on this, on, on my channel. Uh, it's important to note that when you're doing these exercises to really make sure that you're going for the full extension of the movement, meaning that I'm not pushing, when I'm doing it by myself, I might push on an angle. So I'm pushing, I'm going on an angle and I'm winding myself up, going back, going back. But when you are really pushing with your partner, you're actually gonna push straight through. It's the same concept. If you remember when we do push hands, single handed push hands, you do single handed push hands. It's a very similar concept to relaxing all the way through. His concept here, his, his visualization and his exhalation is going to put an arrow through my chest, but connecting through my wrists. He can feel my whole body. The intention to feel your opponent's entire body. And when you're pushing, you're not actually pushing, meaning that I'm I'm flexing my muscles in a particular area to, to push him. I'm actually relaxing onto a single point, meaning that I'm, it's a very focused relaxation, exhaling, going to sleep. 
And all of that pressure goes like an arrow. Same, same thing happened in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You drop your weight on one point like an arrow. So here you're doing a standing up, one point like an arrow. Now when you add two hands, here you're pushing forward and up. And what you're doing is you're taking the arrow focus and you're expanding it, similar to the box that we talked about, the, the, the square hips and shoulders. You want to take that pressure and so let's do two hands. And he's going to push through. And then you're going to come up with the second push here. My intention is to push all the way through, to push all the way through to get him to move back and control his space. So the thing that he has to do is redirect me so that it coils my body. And that's when I do my second push. So he has to let me slide off by redirecting me. And that's going to wind me up for the second push. And that's how the pattern continues. So he's pushing me, he would push me straight, fight in a turn. And now he's wound up for that second push. He does that push. And now I push straight, he's turning me. And it's really important that this exercise, just to remind yourself or remind your students or anyone you're training with, your partners, your training partners, that what was really happening here and this is where I think a lot of times we can get confused as a Tai Chi community, is that we are playing with sensitivity and willpower. And you want to be able to push enough, strong enough to push your opponent back while also being sensitive enough to realize that they're moving your posture, they're moving you, and you're going with it. And the reason you would go with it is because you want to control your opponent's body. You want to be able to manipulate and input the data that you want the opponent to respond to while being sensitive enough. It's just like give and take game. And I say all that because a really strong player should be able to push through you and just blast you right back. It's really, really important. And the more muscle mass you have, and if you have muscle and sensitivity uh, and, and can use both those things, then you're gonna be really, really you know, powerful compared to someone who does not have muscle flexibility, sensitivity. Uh, and if you have the sensitivity, but you don't necessarily have as much muscle, you might be able to beat the person with more muscle. That's really what should happen in Tai Chi. But you want to have the muscle. You want to have the power and you want to optimize the use of the muscles. So we're going here, pushing. I'm pushing forward and up. And let me know, guys, if you need a better angle here. I'm redirecting, redirecting rushing he's pushing on me and make sure that you allow your your partner uh, to finish the move and that you finish your moves completely too and that means that if you see that you're not going all the way and when i say all the way i don't mean over exaggeration i mean really finding if you find that, that somebody's sliding off because they're stiff and that happened several times just now it's right it's right at the end of uh, vintage's second push so one to, sorry, to then the first push. Then the first push, I'm turning him here, but he's, he's a little bit locked over here. So he's not turning. This can be helpful at times and or harmful at times. And it really depends on the timing. So it's helpful when you are playing against an opponent in a competition for points and you're blasting them straight back and he doesn't want to budge from his position. Uh, so he's blasting him straight back. That's great. And so I'm trying to turn him. But when we're doing this, the too much tension is going to actually manifest in the shoulders and the hip, et cetera. And it's going to reduce the amount of data that you or, or vintage, et cetera, is going to get from me. So when you feel this little turn right here, I'm turning my waist and hip, it's going to be super important for vintage to ride with me and not disconnect, but actually continue the connection. Because if he continues the connection, look what he, get, he gets. Look at this right here. This is this forearm. He's about to connect the, the elbow. And what, what does that turn into in a, from a martial standpoint? It turns into a bunch of other le leverage points or striking points. And I'll show you what I mean in one moment. So we're pushing here, and he turns me. I go with it. Notice I'm going with it. If I needed to, I could turn this into an elbow. I can turn this into a big press. So you want to get all that data. You want to allow yourself, if someone's turning you, you don't want to stay stiff and resist the turn in this particular exercise. There are other exercise sets that we'll do that'll teach, uh, help you hone the, the uh, abilities of creating walls and using intentional resistance, et cetera. There's, it's not a bad thing to resist. 
Like that's a, if you've heard that at Tai Chi, that is misinformation. Like you want to resist at times. You want to do it with proper timing and you want to do it intentionally. So uh, here we're really focusing on sticking. We're sticking and we're going with the, going with the movements and you want to stick all the way because you really want to be able to lean into your partner and to get that partner to move at times. Uh, I will push them right to their limit. If if your opponent keeps, if your partner keeps on moving back and falling off their balance, then that's actually your problem, not their problem. <laughs> because you want to push your partner right to the edge, but then allow them to come back to you. You want to have that level of awareness where you're always paying attention to where their limits are. And the more you understand someone else's limits, the more you'll have deeper insight into your own. So it's really, really important. Um, and, yeah, just super, super important. And again, we've gone over this many times uh, on, on many videos. So today I want to talk about three moves that you can do, and we'll see if we get through all three. Uh, but three moves that you can do to disrupt the pattern. And just before we do that, we're going to just switch directions. So why don't you push me and double push, just so you can see it on this. Oh, okay, okay push. And finish. Okay, great. So here we are, just from that short moment in the other direction. And you guys know that you can push other, either direction and with either foot forward. So that means that you have about four uh, variations on doing this. Several variations on doing this. So, and you can also connect, rather than using the palm going to the elbow to redirect, you can use the forearm or you can use the elbow. Again, this is all about sticking. So I'm using the elbow here and I have a little leverage point. I turn that into a leverage point. If that doesn't work, he's going to start drilling. And I turn here and now we go back. And I start pushing from different angles too. So while we're doing this, let's talk about the first, the first move, which is here and that is right here. So let's just walk on over for a second and just get a closer look. We've done this before too, but I want to just bring this into the context. Notice that my hand is rolling on his tricep. Look at my fingers too. My fingers are reaching forward and my fingers, it's not my arms, it's connected to my hips and my waist. So it's all happening and it's rolling. These fingers are rolling inward. The other one's rolling outward. So I really have that yin yang. You can even draw yin yang with my hands right now on screen. So you really have that. And you, it's great to bring this up. And we'll do this from another angle. We can stand right on this angle. So we'll do this and press. It's really great to bring this and throw this into the mix on whatever timing you feel is right. And vintage can, you can do it anytime you want on me too. And press. So he's pressing here. So he, he went forward uh, at, at, at a different angle. So we're yeah, press a one and two, one, two, and roll down and roll the tricep up. Tricep up. We just started doing this vintage yesterday. So there we go, great. So he's got it here and look at how he's, he's cranking my shoulder and he's turning my, my back to him. And if this were a, a, a scenario where you're handcuffing somebody, et cetera, you push the arm in and you push the person to the wall, pin the wall, et cetera. Um, but this, this is definitely a pin, can be a pin, but this is great. Uh, the, the majority of the times that I would do this with, with Sifu Kip Tong, my Tai Chi uncles, we'd really just focus on getting the opponent down. And you can really, and when I say down, I don't mean to throw, I mean, just turning them over so that their face is parallel to the ground, chest parallel to the ground. And there's a lot that can happen here. Press, press, he presses me. And he's hiding, notice that he just hit his elbow right here, I was going for it and he hit the elbow. That's one of the ways you can get around uh, this exercise. Press, press, one, two, it's pushing me, one, two. And we were just, we've sped it up a little bit. So all we keep slowing it down. And just now I had to kind of uh, force it for the camera, right? So you really don't want that out. You really want to feel it. You really want to feel it. He's hiding his elbows, uh, which is great. And hiding the elbow just means dropping the elbow. The more the elbow is up, the more susceptible it is for this. And that's one of the justifications for the Wu style's arms like blades uh, um, uh, premise. So part of the premise of Wu style is like, hey, you know what? We're gonna keep the arms down and the shoulder blades will be completely in. And that's how you're gonna get the, the valves 
opening so that the, the valves, meaning that you push the shoulder blades in and it increases the circulation to the palm of the fingertip. So it's great for long, lanky folks like myself and vintage, really, really fantastic. Uh, it, it can work well for shorter arm folks as well, but it's really great when you can use these arms with the elbows down, like blades chopping in, and there's a lot of pummeling in Wu style. There's a lot of combinations, really, really amazing stuff. And it's um, <clears throat> the combination of Wu style, a lot of them are, are really just like straight blasting. What I mean like by that, uh, like the Bruce Lee, uh, Wing Chun inspired straight blasting concepts, you're really pummeling in um, and there is strategy to it, but I've found more deceptive strategies in other styles than I have in Wu style. However, there are some great moves that we're going to go on, go on to here uh, that are very, that very much interconnected. One of them we just did. So the arm bar, that standing arm bar that we'll call it for, uh, for Wu style, you really want to wait until you find that moment. You can throw this in to the mix anytime you're playing and right here, look at that, right here. So I have, I, 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 not on his elbow, you could do it on the elbow, but I recommend sliding from the elbow up and notice that I keep using, using the, the muscle here. I'm sticking to the muscle and I'm reaching and it's very gentle. It's a really, really gentle, but sudden move, boom. And you're rolling, boom. And it's right here in your Wu style form too. If you're right, you begin your Wu style form here, you turn around, boom, boom, first inhale, inhale back, and right here, do, 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 do. you turn to press. This little turn, we're doing it from the other angle, this turn, right here, that is the move. We just did it, and now we press forward. And this is right before you go into your single whip. So it's a few moves before the very first single whip in Wu style. But again, it's the same move that we're doing right now. Let's just go over it one more time. And guys, please ask any questions if I'm not articulating this. I feel like there's a, there are many other ways to articulate this move. And I'll make a specific video on this one move. And so Vintage just went over uh, under my arm, which is awesome. It's a different move. It's a different move. Notice that he's got a leverage point on his bicep. So if he flips and on the inside, look at this, look at where his fingers are on the inside. His fingers are actually over my wrist, just above my wrist on the forearm right here. So him reaching down and, and reaching up, that's actually great. If he turns and looks that way, he inhales to the hand and keeps, keeps the connection. So he just turned and left his shoulder behind. So if you turn back and keep your shoulder connected. So in other words, when you turn the waist, the shoulder moves with the waist. Yeah, full torque. Yep, and he can take me and move me off. And what that move looks like, again, he just did this right here, and he turned me and moved me this way. It's a little handle flip, and that's more so. That happens, it does happen in the Wu style. It happens here, one, and right here. And then you have your backhand and your press. So this move right here, if done with an open hand, is, is, a, is essentially that same move that, we, that Vintage just did, you can do it on, on, on either arm. Of course, you have to be cautious if you're grappling uh, on, on uh, which side you do it on. Um, that's a different move. <laughs> but we're going to go right to the loop. So pressing, and he's going to press one and two, one, two, one. Right here. This move right here, the sinking move. On the double press, it's really, really, it's a great move to, to, to play with on the double press. Someone's pushing you and you sink and you drop right here. And I just did it moments ago. You're doing your Wusa form and you have your seven star, your play guitar, whatever you might call it in your form and you drop. You suck the belly in, the hips drop and you pull it, sucking in. Shift the weight, exhale into bird's tail, and then you go into your bird's tail. So that little drop right here is really fantastic at also breaking the pattern for push hands, for this four, four move push hands. So let's go for it again. You might have switched sides, but that's totally fine. Two, and we're here. And this is where you start to move, right here. And you have to really work on it with, with your sensitivity 
because it's not always vintage has softened up uh, a lot um, in the last uh, several minutes. So when someone's playing a, a softer game, it's going to be more challenging or going to require even greater sensitivity for you to be able to stick and get that move in. And I, and I got it right here just a little bit. Uh, but when you want to throw it back on somebody, meaning you want it to the first part sucking in, but then you want to throw the pressure back. The only reason you're sucking in in this moment is to suck the pressure downward on an angle. Notice that my hip disappears. I'm not sucking it into my own belly because then I'm taking the pressure in. It's going to push me over my back leg because I'm on my back leg on this exercise. So here I suck it in and I turn slightly. That turn is to take heavy pressure, bring it down, and to move it back up and out on an angle. So you're not pushing it straight back either. You're sucking it down, moving out that way. So here we are, down, 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 down. Exhale, forward, forward. I go from the middle finger of this hand to the middle finger of this hand, you go all the way out on the angle. So you're pushing through an opponent's chest. You're kind of whipping your opponent up and out. And we'll show exactly how that works here. Pressing one, two, three. And two, and you can do it right here too. So that's on the second push. So on his second push, I responded. You can do it on the first push and break the pattern too. Uh, but we'll go to it again. One, two. And I want you guys to know that when I, when I do these videos and we do demonstrations, vintage and everybody who might watch this stuff, uh, one of the things that I that always is like a pet peeve for me with martial arts is the amount of talking in martial arts. So I realize I'm talking a lot right now, but I'm talking a lot right now because these, I want you to get as much information as possible with this exercise and then do it silently. Like this exercise should be done silently and it should be done for a long time silently. The fun is in being quiet and listening to the patterns. The only reason I can talk during this is because I've done it so much and it's very much second nature, but even then it takes away from my, uh, ability to focus fully on this moment, on these patterns and finding all these new, there's always something new in uh, in this four, four move push hands. So even here, drop right here. So he just did the drill on my chest. So this is the loop right here. Look at, let's get a little closer so you guys can see. Okay, so he's got the drill on my chest. He's got the brush here. I drop my elbow. I have this, remember the Omitofo, the Buddha bless you. That's what Omitofo means. Uh, the Buddha bless you block here. And I could keep it out if I wanted to, if you want to have longer range play or closer range play, which is more difficult. So I have this block here. I have this hand here aiming for the elbow, but instead of just going for the elbow, let's just tilt you up just a little bit. Instead of going just for the elbow, I actually go a little bit higher. I'm connecting to the elbow with my wrist, but I let my hand praying mantis style drape over the bicep and just above the, the pocket of the elbow. And so now I have this wonderful moment where as he drills on me, I drop my hips and I brush this off with this hand, but I suck the pressure in. He's going to pull back, we know that. And as he pulls back, I add my pressure and power to it. And I've noticed that if you step a little forward, I add my pressure and power to it on the angle. If you drop this arm just one second so they can see, look at my fingers. My fingers are actually showing what direction I want to go in. Look at my thumb. My thumb is pointing that way toward through his shoulder to the corner. And look at this. My finger, this one is pointing upward, obviously toward this shoulder. So now, if you see these two ideas, as Grandmaster William C.C. Chen always says, the mind follows the fingers. So I have one finger and two finger showcasing where my mind is going. So they're going to meet in the middle. My pressure is going this way. I have these two fingers. My pressure is actually going this way. And when it's on his chest, look at that angle. That angle is going right up through that shoulder. This is his left shoulder. Again, it'll di differ depending on, on the angle you're playing at. But he drills past me, I, right, right here, boom. I have the angle of the shoulder right here and I ride with this hand as well. This is sticking to his chest. This arm right here is pinning. Uh, it is, and it's not a hard pin, meaning I'm not pressing directly uh, a full pin. It's not a full pin, but it's there's enough tension in his arm for me to feel connected to his full body with this posture. So I'm connected here, I'm connected here. He's redirecting me and I'm pressing up. 
So I'm giving a push on both hands. And again, it is the same move from your Wu style form. Here, sucking in, boom. Here's the press on one hand. Here's the hand on the chest. Exhaling out. Inhale, draw in. And now you have your standing arm bar. Exhale, press. And then you have your single whip. So, so that was two moves. And we'll, we'll do it from the, the other angle too before we switch off to the third one. Again, it should be done in silence. Really enjoy the different levels, meaning that when you're pushing, you can push high, or you can push low, pushing low, 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 and then going high. All these things. Awesome. Awesome. And he's look, he's, he's he was about to do it. He was about to do it. Go for it. Yeah, roll it, roll it. Yeah, roll the tricep up. Yep, 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 yep. Awesome. Excellent. So he got the, the first one on me. Excellent. So, and then if that happens, and there's an escape to this too, you should probably tell the escape. The escape is, is called, in different styles, they always call it something dragon with his tail. There's always some dragon with his tail. <laughs> sometimes it's a kick, sometimes it's a punch. But um, this move, the escape, is a dragon whips its tail variation, which you might have seen in Kung Fu, where someone brings their arm up and over. So when you get that lock, if you can lock it again, please. When you get that lock, and if you're doing moving step or any movement especially, you take a step back and drag your arm out. If someone's really tight on you and you can hold really tight, it may not release right away. And it may not release at all. But what you might get from this posture is the ability to spin your elbow down. And if you could spin your elbow down, you're in a much safer position. As long as you can get this elbow down and come back into your opponent, you'll be in a better position. But there are being able to move your arm out it's great. But again, it's really this motion, picking yourself up. And again, it looks just like the back fist, just like the back fist from, from your south form. So let's play again. I'm going to do one extra push. And so we just switch sides by doing one extra push. Now he's going to double push me. And then. Um, so now we switch sides, which is great. So if you're ever questioning how do you switch sides, you can do one extra push and then have, and then reset your pattern. And that's how you switch sides. Or if you want to switch legs, you can just step back. You step back and keep pushing. And step forward. And then I'll step back. And, and push as you step back. I will get it like that. So you can step to, to uh, switch the, the, the legs. If you want to switch the arm, do an extra push. If you want to switch the legs, step while you're pushing. And again, that's, that's you know, it's slightly more advanced once you have the patterns down, but it's just important to know. And two, so right here, you have your little connection right here, and that's when you ride the opponent back. Riding the opponent back. Remember that you're, you want to make sure that you feel a pull the opponent, you suck them in and you don't push until you feel them pushing. And, or the higher level is you push, you push when they push, when they pull. So that means that you have enough experience to know the timing, the, the average timing of one of your opponents, the average timing of one of your opponents, which means that people respond to you in different ways and in similar ways because it's you, meaning that you are a person that, re that, that receives uh, a similar feedback from reality from every every single opponent that you face. Those are the challenges and the specialties unique to you. So once you have a understanding of how people respond to your move, uh, which will be different. My me doing that move is different than Vintage doing that. Uh, like his body is different. The 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 shape is that everything. That like that his timing is going to be slightly different. Everything's going to be slightly different. So therefore, you have to be able to measure what is common in your experience versus the uniqueness of the opponent's re uh, uh, reactions, because every opponent will have unique reactions as well. And once you know that, that commonality, you can always say, you know what? Okay, cool. I have, I'm gonna suck this person in, but I know exactly when he's gonna pull back because everyone responds to me or the average person responds to me uh, in this way. And that's gonna make you really, really sharp I think it's important to think like that as well because uh, that was never articulated to me in push hands, in Tai Chi, 
but through uh, the practice and working with folks like Josh Waitzkin as my coach uh, and, and just being taught to think more deeply about what we're doing, not just feel, but think, two different things. Um, that, that it, we can articulate it like that right now. So make sure that you know that the that you're paying attention to the data set that you get as as unique individual, not just as a, what a move is supposed to do, uh, and also the uniqueness of your uh, of each opponent. So you always have to weigh those things or the three different scales. And so for the final move, you know, I'm going to do the arm drag. We've done the arm drag so many times. Um, I really did like. Vintage sliding over and push, 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 boom. So this is really unique. But Vintage doing this to me is a very, very unique choice. So this unique choice means that I'm coming inside and this move, I, I've gotten throws on this move before, on, on this exact move, because you're spinning the partner on an angle. And again, it depends on the, you know, I've only gotten throw like maybe two, three times ever. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more, but um, it, mo most of the time, the best you're going to hope for is getting the opponent to step to move where you want them to go. Uh, and look, that's that's your ward off, same, very similar posture to ward off. Um, and this is really less of a of a Wu style move that Vince has just pulled off. He did it naturally, but he's he's played with Coach Hands with me and, and some of our other um, uh, partners uh, enough to know that this is stuff that we do often in our play. So this is definitely more of a young style uh, movement, but you're catching on that first push right here. This is the first push. He's got double hands on me. Let's switch sides just so the camera can see. He's got double hands on one arm here. I have this other arm, my outside arm. So my outside arm is on the, the elbow, or I might let him, I might control the elbow with my, in, my forearm. So whether I use my wrist, my hand, my forearm, et cetera, the concept is he's pushing on me. And as he pushes and I turn him, rather than turning with the palm, I turn with the bicep, the elbow, the inside, and I come and I creep inside. And I creep inside so that I can turn him this way. Now, he may not step all the way. And if you're doing your fixed step push hands, which this, that's what this is, you're not supposed to move your feet. So if you all of a sudden step and you turn your partner and get them to move, that's great that you did that, but you broke the rule, the, the skill set we're training, which is making the opponent move without moving your feet. So in the event that you want to play with this move and slide the arm under, let's let's uh, do it from the other side just so they can see. Um, so push on this one, please. So he's pushing. This is his first push. Double arms on me. One, two. So... My hand normally would be here and I would turn him off and then he would do that second push the drill, right? So then I push back on him. Now he's got the double push again. Instead of doing the hand on the elbow, I'm gonna press, press, press. I'm going to look how I, I let the distance. I, I let the, I push, push, boom. So I allowed him to come closer without me moving my body. So here he pushes, this is more advanced concept. So now I'm getting his elbow in the pocket of my elbow and I reach around inside. And let's just show this. I reach around inside and over the wrist. Again, that praying mantis position that we talked about, the praying mantis right here. Boom, praying mantis kind of right here. So we're inside and then I turn. Then I turn my waist and I flip. It's like a, 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 in Grandmaster William Chen would call it the handle flip. So you flip the handle and the, the elbow comes up, the bicep inflates and the bicep shoots downward. And all of that is connected to his tricep, to his arm. So the intention is that I'm flipping the arm down. Now, when someone relaxes like he did, which is excellent, um, it's gonna be much more challenging to, to essentially pull them off their base. So you might wanna come right back and, into your pushing. But again, you're breaking the pattern. With all these moves, you're breaking the pattern only so you can reset the pattern. So you might have a few moments, my dad and I would do this, you might have a few moments of freestyle push hands for you know a few seconds, but then you want to come right back to the pattern because the pattern is the thing that's going to give you all these different uh, perspectives of where to apply the pressure, when to apply the pressure, when to take it away, et cetera. So all the timing, all the rhythm is in that four push and you really want to be able to experiment with and break timing and rhythm with these three moves and other moves that we've um, that, that we'll talk about over time.
So pressing and smooth. So he pushes one, pushes two, I push one, I drill and push two. Come back one, I'm slitting the slide under, and I'm getting the hand, and if I need to, look at this hand, my inside hand, I'm sliding this down if I need to, almost like a handshake. So I had my Omi Topo, Buddha bless you, position here, and look, let's just bring it a little bit closer, just look at this right here, sliding my hand over, sliding my hand over, boom. We do this all the time. All this little wrist stuff, all the time. So like, oh, can we use the back hand? Uh, so so what, what do you, please, please, um, uh, here, I'm just gonna pin you so you can ask the question. Sam? Can you use this one? Oh, absolutely. You mean to, to block? No, the, to, to use the backhand to push. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That that's what we were talking about on the last um, on the last move, the loo to the the bird's tail. The the back of the hand was on the the uh, on the chest toward the shoulder. So we had we had it right there. Exactly, exactly. Pressing up here to the to the to your partner. Can uh, you use the the rolling the the coiling? From here, you can use a coil. Absolutely, exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. And, and again, like you know, you're you're gonna the 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 important thing about this pattern is that everyone's going to have their own unique perspective of how to to get the most out of the style as they know it and as it manifests through their own body, which is always going to be unique. So I highly recommend once you get the two pushes and two rollbacks down, keep on experimenting with with what feels like. Come up with new moves. You know that, that that that's the most interesting, fun thing because that's that's what's going to surprise other players when you meet them and they have their own way of doing this. And again, this is I would not spar, I wouldn't wrestle, I wouldn't do anything if it wasn't for this one exercise. There's no single better exercise in Tai Chi push hands than this exercise in my experience, and I've experienced a lot of push hands. So uh, I, I I can't recommend this one like two move two push more than than anything else. Uh, we we do the the one arm push hand to really just get people to start thinking about push hands, but it's really this one that it requires more dexterity, uh, more knowledge of your body, um, but it still should be uh, uh, you, you know easy enough for someone to pick up. Right, thank you. Okay, so let let's let's um with that said let let's let's cool down, and uh, vintage and I have a. Uh, uh, we're headed to do some some kempo after this too, so it's gonna be great. So let's let's cool down. Uh, so remember, just the, the quick review: you have your 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 three put your the three moves to disrupt. The three moves to disrupt are going to be one and then two. So rolling one, we have the rolling arm bar. That's one, and. Two is going to be one, two, it presses, and then press one. And then on the second push, I'm doing the, the roll of the um, <clears throat> burst tail. And then the third one is going to be this little bicep roll. That's his and Ronnie. Sound show champion, he's probably well looking by. <laughs> and then this one. You can do this uh, on either the first first push or the second push. Every single time before we did first push, this time I did the second push. And again, it's that handle flip. And notice that I don't have the same amount of leverage. If I don't step, which you're not supposed to, I'm not gonna have the same amount of leverage. So that means that a move like this, if you're, if you're really focused on simply manipulating your opponent's body weight, then you can allow yourself to just experiment and have fun with this, protect yourself, and you don't allow their hand to slap back in your face, which will suck. So slide up and protect. Notice that the second that I let go of something that can hit me, I protect myself and I stick to it. So and I, I can push back, there's a lot of options from there. So just remember to, to always be conscious of what happens in real martial arts, which means that you get hit. And even if you're doing Tai Chi, you, you don't want to train yourself to allow yourself to get hit. Uh, you want to really always protect yourself. And by having, by knowing you can always protect yourself, there's always this amazing level of confidence that comes up. So softly make sure that you 
cover those limbs, those angles, those points that are going to cut the face, that are going to slam into the, the neck or the, the groin or, or the liver, et cetera. Just do your best to, to um, be very conscious of that. And then only connect to those points for as long as you need to, to protect yourself. Because if you spend, spend too long, you're likely going to miss another limb that's going to be coming at you. And then you're going to get with that. So, so always cover and then move to the next one. Now, obviously, this is uh, just part of our, our push hands play. So let's finish it up. Imaginary string, those people on the top of the head. Takes this right here. Inhaling up, up into the cabinet. Exhale. And one foot forward. So one foot forward, touch the ground, exhale, touch the toe. Inhaling out, switch legs. Inhaling out, 45 degrees. Exhale. Inhaling out, switch legs, 45. Inhaling out, 90. Inhaling out, 90. And coming up, right leg down, front. Inhale, turn to the left. Exhale, wet leg down the left. Inhale, out, turn to the right. Exhale, wet right leg down the right. Inhale, out, over the head, down the back. Exhale, down. Yep. Up the other side, switch down the left side. Up the other side, down the left side. Over the head, down the back. Yeah, yeah. And exhale into the chest, tap it around, and massage, and tap it around, tap it around, tap it around, blood rub up, and switch, switch, sternum, four fingers. I'll have on either side. Chin, squeeze, and switch, squeeze. The hormone, the sleep on the earlobe, up on the face to the side, up on the face to the side, up to the side, and then we're going to go to the scalp and fingers front to back and back to front. Very strong pressure front to back. Back to front, strong pressure from the back. Back to front, massage the scalp. Back to back, back to front. Hollow fist, gentle banging, front to back. Back to front. Grab the scalp and lean it like go. One, two, three, release. One, two, three, release. Well, release, 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 and reverse it. Release, 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 and then leaning either direction to release, to release, 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 and then reverse it. Release. Reverse the direction of your of the movement and going from the back of the head to the front. Release. Release. Four fingers at the top of the forehead, inside the scalp, and reverse it. One, two. Temples, and reverse it. Through the eyes, and reverse it. Nails in the groove between the eyeball and the bone and tap around. Second circle bigger, third circle biggest, and massage eyebrow, and bridge the nose, side of the nose, either side. The heart right here, inside, one, two, three, four, five, switch, two, three, top and bottom, and switch. On the side, above the gums in the groove, one, two, three. In the bottom, below the gum, through and tongue, and reverse it. 
and flick the fingers out. Thumbs. And one, two, three. Grab one, two, three. Finger. Just press and hold. Let's just let's massage our palm. Press and hold. And drill. One, two, three, and tap. One, two, third circle, biggest three. Top and bottom. And sides. Top and bottom. And sides. Top and bottom. And the side. Make sure that the <clears throat> with that natural group. Either side. The fingers. The massaging fingers as you squeeze should slide. Notice that my finger it doesn't just go down, it slides in. So you want to slide into those natural grooves. And then same thing on the outside, slides in. Then other side, press and hold. And drill. One, two, three. Tap one, two, three, top and bottom, and sides. Squeeze top and bottom, and side, top and bottom, and sides, top and bottom, and sides, top and bottom, and sides. And shake the hands out. Put the fingers together, interlace, and the side, like pulling apart. Really feel the stretch of the wrist. Really feel the stretch. Make sure that you're going up and down the stretch, and then start speeding it up. Really make sure that you're going all the way. Keep on speeding it exactly. And make sure you're getting all angles too, because a lot of times you'll see, see folks just do this. But this is great, but you want to get the up down, over, under, all and, and out by pulling apart. So make sure that you feel the stretch and the roll. And then you can speed that up and then reverse it on the direction. Really feel the stretch and the roll up, down, over, under. Stretch and roll. Really start speeding it up after that. Always want our wrist to be as strong as possible. Okay, and relaxing, inhale, right leg to belly. Spread the whole body. Uh, now we're roll white light from toes to the top of the head. Exhale, roll down, head to heels, down the back. Uh, inhale, left side, right leg. Exhale, down the right. Uh, Inhale, yeah, white legs in the belly. Exhale, push it down the legs into the ground. We come back up and around like a fountain in reverse. Um, yeah, white legs in the belly. Exhale, push it to the top of the head. Make a big bubble around you. Gratitude um, for the body, the space that you're in, good people in the world. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Vintage, for training. Thank you guys so much. So good to see you. And uh, of course, anybody who watches this after the fact, uh, you can always please subscribe, like, to leave a comment, ask questions, thoughts, or ideas. Uh, Coach Jans Tai Chi on all platforms. Uh, Patreon.com slash Jans Tai Chi if you want to support the channel. And love you guys so much. And, uh, and Mark, so good to see you. Mark, <laughs> Sam, good to see you too, man. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day and a great week. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Thanks, Jens. Thank you.